The books we read and the stories we share can change the world. Every one of us, young and old, can plant seeds of change in our spheres of influence and incrementally improve the world through the books we read. Currently our schools, universities, workplaces are working to stamp out racism, prejudice and unconscious bias. Children are experiencing discrimination and isolation due to the colour of their skin, curl of their hair, their background, caring responsibilities, family structure, immigration status, the list goes on. So how do we create change as readers? We can turn the tide by actively preventing those biases from festering in the first place. Instead of reinforcing biases and stereotypes, we have a chance to challenge them through books. Imagine the norm being people seeking out stories to give them an insight into different experiences. And imagine each of us having stories that reflect us, the authentic us, being in libraries, in our classrooms and in our workplaces, building a desire to know more. We all know reading is a good thing to do, all the experts tell us so. Research shows us that literacy is linked to life expectancy, reading fluency is linked to educational outcomes and achievement. But less emphasis is placed on reading as a mechanism to build empathy, to develop positive self-identity and curiosity. In 2020, research showed that less than 5% of protagonists in British children's books were from a black, Asian or other minority background despite people of that description being the global majority. Further to that, young non-white children are more likely to read books with an animal as a protagonist than someone who looks like them or shares their cultural heritage. This made me think back to a couple years ago. My 10-year-old daughter read two books, The Boy at the Back of the Class by Anjali Raff and Shadow by Michael Mapurgo. These books gave her such an insight into the heartbreak of fleeing your hometown, the refugee process and how that impacts someone. These books opened her eyes. I thought back to my secondary school years, 15 year old me sitting in the classroom studying the poems from other cultures, so excited to be reading poems by Benjamin Zephaniah and Grace Nichols with real snapshot reflections of my Caribbean heritage. And for once, me holding the cultural capital, me knowing all the snippets of extra information and understanding. I also remember that same anthology teaching me what a Salwa Kameez was, thanks to Maniza Alvi. But opportunities like this are rare. So at what age does diversity and representation in literature become important? Well, quite simply, at every age. Studies by a researcher named David Kelly and his team show that babies can differentiate between faces of different ethnicities at three months old, and they spend longer looking at faces that are similar to their caregivers. This preference continues and increases until they are nearly a year old, Interestingly though, the more ethnicities children were exposed to in real life, the preference is reduced and babies spent similar time looking at different sets of faces from different ethnic backgrounds. You may have heard people talk about books being mirrors and windows. So as mirrors, well-chosen books can act as comforting, self-assuring reflections of ourselves. Mirrors, authentic mirrors, can help people, children, families feel seen and included. And that's important. It's critical, in fact. Windows, on the other hand, are just as important. Windows give you a view to somewhere else, an insight into someone else's home, family, language and experience. It's the combination of mirrors and windows that help us change the world. 
15 year old me excelling in class, studying literature by authors of Caribbean heritage. Well, that's a mirror. 15 year old me learning the name for a traditional Pakistani outfit and being able to use that language confidently. Well, that's a window. I want you to think about a time that you found a book that acted as a mirror for you. How did that make you feel? Like you belonged? Like you matter? Did you feel seen? In my book, Six Gems for the Love of Reading, I write about representation being one of the gems and a crucial element of fostering reading enjoyment and engagement. People need positive and authentic representation of themselves, shared and promoted in the same way other texts are. In book corners, reading lists, library book clubs, exam and test literature, and quotes for posters. And this also stretches to other languages too. How many books are we sharing that promote other languages? And that also stretches to different languages. How many books or stories do we share that celebrate different languages? Because we live in a globally connected world, understanding and appreciating cultures and heritage is no longer a nice thing to do. It's critical for social cohesion, dispelling stereotypes, allowing an insight into world politics and simply being a good person. I'd like to share with you a quote from one of my favourite authors, Mallory Blackman, author of the Noughts and Crosses series. She says, reading is an exercise in empathy, an exercise in walking in someone else's shoes for a while. So let's get exercising and make a change. So here's my call to action our must-haves for authentic diversity and representation in literature. Our job is for each and every one of us to champion diversity in literature in every realm, because it benefits us all. For each and every one of us to model reading diverse texts with varied protagonists and based in different settings. For each and every one of us to buy all the different books your mirrors, your windows, and your new shoes. Because who does the responsibility lie with? Publishers, schools, libraries, family members? In fact, it lies with all of us to take those incremental steps to change the world. Thank you.